This machine doesn't glow. It doesn't scream for attention. It just spins quietly, endlessly, with power that seems to come from nowhere. It's buried beneath the frame of your car, hidden inside factories, pressed into walls and ceilings. And yet, it's responsible for much of the movement in our world. This isn't just a motor. It's a century-old idea, reborn in the age of batteries and silicon. Nikola Tesla imagined it. Elon Musk rebuilt it. Together, they sparked a silent revolution, one that changed how we think about motion, electricity, and what it means to drive. Long before electric cars zipped through city streets, a quieter transformation had already begun. In the late 1800s, Nikola Tesla introduced something the world hadn't seen before, a motor powered not by steam or gasoline, but by the invisible pulse of alternating current. It didn't catch fire or belch smoke. It didn't need fuel. It just worked. Alternating current, or AC, became the lifeblood of modern electricity. Unlike direct current, which moves in one direction, AC flips back and forth dozens of times per second. That simple shift, changing direction, opened the door to long-distance power lines and efficient machines. Tesla's motor turned that electric rhythm into motion. No sparks, no brushes, just magnetic fields dancing in perfect sync to spin a rotor. It powered factories, elevators, trams, even hydroelectric plants like the one at Niagara Falls. Most people never saw the motor, but it was there, humming beneath progress. And for over a century, it stayed mostly the same. Until a car company borrowed Tesla's name, not just for branding, but as a blueprint. They didn't just want a motor, they wanted to reimagine movement itself. Electricity on its own doesn't move anything, but pass it through a wire and something strange begins to happen. Around that wire, a magnetic field appears, silent, invisible, but powerful. It vanishes the moment the current stops, but as long as it flows, that magnetic presence can do real work. Now, imagine wrapping that wire into a tight coil. Add iron in the center. Run alternating current through it. You've just created an electromagnet strong enough to push or pull metal across a room without touching it. That's the secret behind motion without gears or fuel, the rotating magnetic field. It's created when you sequence the current through different coils in just the right rhythm. North and south poles flip, travel, and rotate in a loop. Inside a motor, that rotating field surrounds a cylinder called the rotor. In Tesla's original design, this rotor wasn't powered directly. No wires, no spark. It was just metal, simple and still. But when the magnetic field around it began to spin, something strange happened. The rotor started to move, as if the air itself had turned into invisible hands, nudging it forward. No combustion, no belts, just electricity and motion. This principle became the heart of modern machinery. And decades later, it became the core of a new kind of car. When Tesla Motors began building its first car, they weren't starting from scratch. They were digging into forgotten brilliance. The original AC induction motor wasn't just reliable. It was rugged, simple, and already proven across industries. It had no delicate parts, no brushes to wear out, and no need for constant attention. That mattered. Because back then, electric vehicles weren't taken seriously. People expected them to fail. Batteries were limited. Charging stations were rare. But one thing Tesla could count on was the motor. In the Roadster, it delivered instant torque, silent operation, and acceleration that stunned early drivers. More importantly, it gave them something no gas engine could match. Regenerative braking. Every time the car slowed down, the spinning wheels reversed the motor's roll. Instead of consuming energy, it started producing it, feeding electricity back into the battery. It was as if the car was reclaiming motion that would have otherwise been lost to heat and friction. This wasn't just efficiency, it was elegance. The same motor that drove the car forward could also slow it down and recharge it. No extra parts, just a clever reversal of forces. In the Model S and X, this motor proved it could move luxury-sized vehicles with sports car speed. But even brilliance has limits. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. The induction motor had served well. 
But as Tesla pushed harder for range, speed, and efficiency, it started to show its age. At low speeds, it was powerful. But keeping that power consistent across all conditions meant pushing more current through the coils, generating more heat, and demanding more from the battery. That heat needed to be managed. That extra energy? It chipped away at efficiency. It wasn't just about going fast. It was about doing more with less. Less energy, less space, less weight. And that's where the original design began to struggle. The rotor, just a passive cage of metal, couldn't always keep up. It relied entirely on the stator's rotating field to magnetize it. And that process, while smooth, wasn't the most efficient way to generate strong torque across all driving conditions. Tesla needed something smarter. A motor that could react quicker, pull harder, and sip power instead of guzzling it. So, for the Model 3, they made a change. Quietly, without fanfare, they redesigned the motor from the inside out. They didn't abandon Tesla's idea. They refined it, layering in new materials and magnetic strategies. They kept what worked and reimagined what didn't. What came next wasn't just a better motor. It was something entirely different. Inside the Model 3 lives a motor unlike anything before it. It's called an Internal Permanent Magnet Synchronous Reluctance Motor. Sounds complicated. But the idea behind it is simple. Combine the raw pull of permanent magnets with the precision of reluctance design. The biggest change? The rotor itself. Instead of a hollow metal cage, Tesla embedded powerful permanent magnets, strips of neodymium, deep inside an iron core. Not on the surface, but within channels shaped to guide magnetic forces. This change brought two key advantages. First, it allowed the rotor to generate its own magnetic field at all times. That meant stronger torque, especially when accelerating from a stop. Second, because the magnets were buried inside, they were less likely to be flung apart by centrifugal force at high speeds, a major problem in older magnet-based designs. But there was still a challenge. At high speeds, those same magnets could work against the motor, inducing unwanted current and fighting the stator's field. Engineers call it back EMF. It drains power and lowers efficiency. Tesla's answer was clever. They shaped the rotor to take advantage of magnetic reluctance, how certain materials naturally align with magnetic fields. Then, using advanced software, they could shift the motor's behavior dynamically. Strong magnetic push at low speeds, efficient alignment at cruising. It wasn't just hardware, it was harmony between materials, motion, and algorithms. Neodymium magnets changed everything for electric motors. Their power density, durability, and compact size made them ideal for the next generation of EVs. Tesla embraced them for good reason. The magnets delivered strong, consistent performance in a small package. Motors became lighter, more responsive, and more efficient. But beneath that success was a growing problem. Neodymium is a rare earth element. Not because it's hard to find, but because extracting it in useful quantities is complicated, expensive, and often damaging to the environment. Most of the world's supply comes from a handful of countries, creating a fragile supply chain prone to price fluctuations, political tensions, and ethical concerns. Tesla's long-term vision wasn't just about speed or range. It was about scale, millions of vehicles, global accessibility. And depending on rare earths for every motor made, that vision is unstable. So the company had to ask a tough question. Could they maintain performance without relying on volatile material? Could they build a motor that was as efficient and scalable as it was sustainable? Their solution didn't lie in some rare new discovery. It came from something ordinary, a material everyone overlooked, a ceramic magnet, a compound made from rust, and it might be the future of electric motion. Ferrite magnets don't sound revolutionary. They're made from ceramic compounds, mostly iron oxide, the same substance we call rust, blended with metals like manganese or zinc. You'll find them in everyday objects, the speaker in your headphones, the motor in your blender, the latch on your refrigerator door. They're cheap, durable, and widely available. But when it comes to raw magnetic strength, they fall far behind neodymium. 
And that's where the challenge begins. Tesla couldn't just remove rare earths and drop in weaker materials. They had to rethink everything. The motor's geometry, the cooling system, the software that controls the magnetic fields, all of it needed to evolve. They couldn't rely on force alone, so they leaned into efficiency. The goal wasn't record-breaking speed. It was reliability, affordability, and scale. A motor built not for luxury sedans, but for fleets of autonomous vehicles. One that could be manufactured in the millions, with fewer supply risks and less environmental impact. This is the direction Tesla is heading. Motors designed with long-term sustainability in mind. Not just for performance, but for the planet. Because sometimes innovation means stepping back from what's most powerful and embracing what's most practical. Nikola Tesla dreamed of a world moved by invisible forces, silent, efficient, and endless. Over a century later, that dream powers our homes, our factories, and now, our cars. Tesla, the company, didn't just bring its motor back to life. They reimagined it. With better materials, smarter software, and a deeper understanding of energy, they turned a 19th century invention into a 21st century engine of change. It wasn't about starting over. It was about looking closely at what already worked and pushing it further. Because real innovation isn't always a leap. Sometimes it's a quiet rotation in the right direction. 